Okay, hello Josh. Um, so, you uh, last we talked, you said that you quite liked this idea of a tree silhouette. Um, there's an image obviously we saw online, I've done a quick sketch of it where we saw kind of the tree. I talked about putting in some little silhouettes there in the background of some maybe logs, of some machinery, because that's things you've looked at. Um, and ultimately it's in the shape of a tree. Now this is something you can do. I'd recommend that if you could find yourself a big bit of cardboard, you could, or a big bit of card, you could cut out the shape. Um, and I would cut it out. I think, you know, you could draw it on a rectangle piece of paper like this, but for your final outcome, if we want to go larger scale, I would take it and cut out the shape. I'm thinking maybe a2, full A2 would be a good size, A2 being, you know, this entire book here, double this book at least, um, depending on how much time you'd have to do it, I think that would be a really nice size, A2, and then you cut it out so you've got less shape to do in that A2 anyway, and you paint a really beautiful scene here. That is one option. The thing you're going to have to really work on if you're doing that is making sure that your stumps look really lovely and detailed. These are obviously very quick colour pencil sketches, but painting could probably do it a little bit more detailed. Um, please do look and have a go at the A3 branch drawing tutorial and bark drawing tutorial I did to help you with that. And I think that page in your book would be very beneficial earlier on. So do have a try. Um, I'd like to float another idea by you. Obviously, you can have a try of this one. I'll send you a picture of it if you want to. There's an artist I'd really like you to have a look at. And his name is Jim Dine. One second. Let me get a picture up of his work for you. So Jim Dine is a fantastic artist. I'm going to show you an example here. Um, and Jim Dine essentially draws um, tools. You can see he has a saw there and he generally does them with charcoal. I'll send you some pictures, but you can just see in the bottom there all of the texture, all of the design of his work. Let me get that one there. He generally uses charcoal and he does these kind of almost silhouette outlined drawings of machinery. And I thought it might be quite a good idea for you to explore that maybe rather than a tree like we're doing here we actually take something you've already drawn before like a chainsaw and we draw your scene inside a chainsaw because then you're bringing in work that you've done before uh, i'm just going to find a picture of a chainsaw give me 10 seconds okay so i found myself a picture of a chainsaw that one there i think it's quite similar to the one you've drawn in your book before and um, the ones in your book are a little bit less refined than they could be. I think they come out a little bit cartoonish, maybe because you don't have quite enough tonal range in them. Um, but maybe this style will work a little bit better. So I'm going to start off with a bit of charcoal if you've got it. If not, you could use a pencil, preferably a darker pencil, like a 9B, something like that, uh, if you've got hold of one. I'm going to start off just sketching out the chainsaw. You can do it very lightly in pencil first if you wanted to. Obviously, you could grid it out if you wanted to, but I think the... The beauty of Jim Dine's work is that it is a little bit loose and a bit sketchier. So the first thing I do as development is actually just do a charcoal drawing of a saw. I might to adjust the proportions a little bit so it fits on the page. It is a complicated piece of equipment, the chainsaw, which is a little bit annoying for what we want. I'm going to leave the other bit off. I don't think I want that right now. So simplifying the design just a little bit. Okay, so I've got a basic shape there. I'm then going to go back to Jim Dine's work and just have a look at how he creates these very dark, you can probably just sit there, these very dark textured outlines, okay? So he kind of almost blends the background. There's a little bit of detail in there. I'll leave that for now, but I just want to start off with this background. You can see that almost silhouette design there and then the deeper colour we have in the background. So there is a little bit of texture in the saw so I am going to go with the try and give the saw its texture before I do this go around the saw to give it that texture because it's not a smooth round object the difficulty is not making it look too cartoonish okay now I've done that I'm just going to shade into that background shade in those little gaps try not to lose too much of my detail Try not to smudge over it like that. Okay, and then if you have a look at Jim Dine's work, again, it's very smudgied. So what I'm going to do is just start taking that outwards. Don't want to go into my design. And if you've got a rubber, it's probably very helpful to have a rubber here, because if you do go over your design, you can go back into it. Okay, and we're just going to slowly keep building this up. I'm going to do a couple of layers. 
maybe sketch it out a bit more in places. Essentially just going around the outside. Bit of sketching. Again, if you can get yourself a bit of charcoal, I would, because this would be some really lovely... You could do some Jim Dine inspired pictures and you can see where these aren't going to take too long. This would be a really lovely thing. You could try out a few different designs. You could try out uh, an axe as well as a chainsaw or just a few different machineries. Okay, and blending it out and keeping it pretty messy as Jim Dine would do. I'm going to go a little bit less smudgy on this side. And inside there's quite a lot of shading. I'm going back to my saw. So I've got to work out where I want to keep it light and where I want to get it dark. So I want it quite dark in here. So I'm trying to make it almost like a silhouette, but not sit so the background, using negative space to shade in. So I'm trying to just shade in the background of my piece. And again, try and keep your lines inside as clear as you can. You can use a rubber after if you want to. But again, we're going for that gym dine. It really is quite a messy, quite a messy style of working, but you can already see how effective that's going to be. And again, I'm kind of just shading in the negative space at the background, trying to work around my design. Keeping it quite loose. Now these could be some lovely pages. And don't be afraid to go A3 with this drawing. You know, go big. You don't have a lot of big drawings in your book. And these don't take too long. And they're the kind of things that's going to be very difficult to draw on a small scale. So, you know, feel free to try out a few of these. Take two or three pages. You know, why not? Do a few. Even if you want to do them on separate paper. And if we're happy with them, we can pop them in. Right, so I've got the outside done. Going back to Jim Dine's style of working. We do have some detail in there in the inside. So I am going to go for a bit of detail in there in the inside. But just not too much. Just enough to give it a little bit of range of shape and texture. So we have this little shape in here i am going to go for that and there is a kind of shape in there so we want to give it enough that we can see it's a mechanical piece of equipment now it might be worth getting yourself a little cotton bud something like that so you can blend with a little bit more precision than just your fingers i'm just kind of going for it right now and again work back into it to get some highlights with a rubber i'm being a little bit lazier i would get a rubber and work back into that if i could bothered so I'm getting a little bit of detail there in the machinery, maybe a little bit of shading on here. A little bit of shading on the sword to show there's a bit of separation there. And then I might add a bit of shading to this as well. To show this kind of comes up here. And you can see I'm not being too careful with it, not being, trying to build it up, trying to work it in. Changing the shape of that a little bit. That's kind of the lovely thing about this is that you can use your fingers. You can rub, you can blend things in rather than rub them out. Okay, and we start get going. I'm going to shade that in as well. Now the key is making the outside darker, even if you want to do a bit of shading on the inside. So I've got a very basic saw shape there, and again I could keep adding a bit of shading if I wanted to with what I've got left on my fingers. But the idea is we're keeping it just a little bit messy. Okay, if we reference Jim Dine in this, this could be a couple of really lovely experimental pages. Okay, now, going forward from this, I would do a couple of these first. After this, what my suggestion, perhaps rather than a tree like this, after we've done some of these, you then consider doing your painting, just like this, a scene, something like that, a coloured pencil drawing or painting, whatever you're going for, but we actually do it inside the chainsaw. Um, and we could take some elements of Jim Dine's work, so the background we could do this with. Um, you could even do this drawing and then we could paint over it. So I can do you a quick example of that in a second. Um, I would go with a chainsaw because you've drawn a chainsaw before, so I think that would work quite well. Um, but then we can take this silhouette, this shape, and paint your scene into it. Uh, another artist you can look at, I need to look him up again, what's his name? Okay, another artist you could look at is, uh, I believe his name is... Let me have a look, let me have a look. Daniel Thompson. Daniel Thompson. He's someone that Rudra is using for his work. Daniel Thompson using machinery and he paints on kind of cogs and machinery to do his scenes. So you could use him as a link as well. Between him and Jim Dine, that's two very strong artists. So you're taking this person who paints within silhouettes of machinery, which is what you'll be doing here, and you'll be taking Jim Dine for that look 
of the drawing and design and it allows you to do something a little bit looser again I would work in charcoal so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get out some acrylics and we're going to have a very small tester section of painting straight on top of this okay two seconds Okay, so I've got my paints out. I'm gonna have a go at painting a very similar scene to this on here. And there's a couple of things you can do to develop this. Obviously, you wanna find some photographs to be working from, maybe put those in your book and discuss how you're referencing your imagery. Don't just do it from cartoons or from your mind because they won't come out effectively detailed. And as I've said, have a go at that drawing activity so that you learn a little bit more about design. I'm gonna start off at the bottom fairly dark I think it should be quite dark to start with because it's going to almost be like the ground, the underground roots of the tree. So I'm going quite dark down here. But as I come up, I'm already going to start lightening up just a little bit and blending it upwards. I'm going to mix some lighter colours in. I'm going to try and get my hands out of the way. And don't be afraid to paint straight over the charcoal, okay? I would draw this in something like charcoal, a little bit messy, a little bit loose. blending my colours. If you work fairly quickly before it dries, you can get a really nice blend on your colours. And we're still going for those kind of brownish, tree-ish colours. Now, with acrylics, there's a couple of things you can do. The first thing you could do is just do your base colour first. You could set yourself a base of your kind of background, grassy, groundy colour to give yourself something to work on later on. Personally, I probably would do that. And remember, if you're going to be painting over something, you might have to go fairly thick with your paints to build it up. Going straight in with some yellow ochre, it's like a goldy colour, some lighter brown colour, mixing it all in while it's still wet to give myself a little bit of an ombre effect. We do want this to be quite nice and colourful even though it's browned, we want it to stand out. We don't want to mix it with too much black because we don't want it to stand. We don't want it to blend in with our background. Okay, so let me go up a little bit higher again. Mixing in a little bit of a lighter colour. Haven't quite decided how that's gonna look yet. The lovely thing about acrylics is we can build over it later on. Okay, I'll pause here to build that up. Okay, so now I've got a very basic base colour and this is just my ground at the moment. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the for a few of the uh, trunks. And I'm just gonna sketch it out first with some white paint, very little bit. I mean, obviously you could go into this with a pencil if you wanted to. I'm just gonna start off lightening this area a little bit. And remember when you're painting anything, logs or anything at all, you have to pick a side where your light source is coming from. So I'm now deciding my light source is gonna come from the left, probably because it is right now, it's inspired me. And I'm just painting in the kind of top of that tree, remembering to keep it in kind of ovals while you paint and sketching out that rough plan for that tree stump. And that's this is why the drawing tutorial is going to really help because all of the little dots and dashes I show you how to do in the coloured pencil drawing on the other will apply this even with our painting. So lots of little dashes. We don't need it to be too smooth, okay? We then want to mix a group of colours. The thing about bark, as we looked at the other one, it doesn't have one colour. So we do want to build up our colours, again, in tiny little flicks. Tiny little flicks. And if you're obviously going bigger than this, you'll have a lot more room. I do feel, even though going bigger can be a bit of an effort, we've jumped around that a little bit by having our very textured background design, which I think will work really well. Um, but when it's bigger, you're going to have more space to actually put in the detail. When you go too small, you're not going to have the space to put it in and it's everything's going to look. You need to use a really tiny brush and you need to really pay this the attention it deserves, these pieces of wood. Getting a bit of paint on my brush and texturing it in. Okay, I'm going on a very small scale here, A3, and I think this is far too small to be doing something like this. So we want to go minimum A2 with a piece of work like this. If, you can, if you've got access to go bigger, you can get yourself an A1 piece of paper and go on. Fantastic. But work to what you're comfortable working with. Okay, not forgetting that we'd have the kind of edge going around. I'm just trying to get in that dark. Now as I get into that dark a bit, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of black with it, but don't forget about like your blues and your greens and your browns and your reds. All of those mixed together can get you quite a nice dark shade. Don't always jump instantly to black, especially where the background's black. 
I think the more colour we can get in this the better. So I'm actually using a bit of blue here and a bit of green mixed in with the blacks and the browns to get myself a slightly darker shade. Something that will stand out from the background. Okay, we're going to need to get some shadow almost going on there in between the log and the gap. I'm going to work that in a bit and probably blend that in with the background in a minute. With the browns and things in the background. To make sure that doesn't stand out too much. Because like anything, we're still going to have a shadow on there. There we go, we can see that's starting to take shape there. Okay, you can see we've got the startings of quite a nice log. Now we have to remember some things as we move backwards to adjust the size, to adjust the vibrancy of the colour. The front one is going to be really lovely and vibrant. So I'm going to get more white into that at the front. And do feel free to let some layers dry and then work on top of them. I'm putting some white on here to stand it out. That tree isn't going to be white necessarily. I'll probably want to add some yellow ochre into that. But I think I'm probably going to let that dry so I've got a bit of a lighter base to work from. But the point is we're making it stand out and that could work really lovely. If we could have this whole section painted up with some of these, that'll work really well. Okay, so I've done one more little stump for us and I just wanted to start showing you, you know, you can go a bit further away, do a bit of a silhouette. Do think about your ground colouring, okay? Or you want to go dark in the bottom, you may want to go a little bit, usually when something gets further away it gets lighter and lighter, so I tell getting from very dark brown to a very light brown on top, um, but play around with your compositions, okay? As we get to the very background, um, next I'm going to do the kind of sky colouring. I'm going to take a similar, sim similar. I'm going to get more blues out, shouldn't I? We get a different blue colour out. I'm going to take some similar colouring to here. It's for you to consider what colours work best for you. Obviously, you're still trying to create a scene. Do you want it to stay in all of the browns? Do you want to create a sky that's a little bit of a brownie colour? Do you want to make the sky grey? It's the kind of thing where you don't necessarily want the sky to be really happy and beautifully blue and sunny skies, cartoonishly blue sunny skies, because it's about the atmosphere you're creating. Okay? And you can talk about that in your planning stage. It's, you know, you don't really want to create that happy looking environment, that happy scene. Because we're trying to keep the idea that it's sad and this is and this has been caused by this machinery. So I'm going to mix a little bit of blue in with my colouring to start with. I've got a little bit of kind of yellow ochre colour in there as well. In the start of the horizon, I'm trying to keep the horizon quite light. We'll see why in a bit. Mixing in little bits of blue in with that. And some of the charcoal's kind of getting mixed in with it and making it a bit grey, which I don't mind at all. I think, again, we're going with those grey skies. I'm kind of watering down my acrylics at the moment quite a bit. You don't have to do that, obviously. That's a very, very bright blue. I don't want that bright blue there. So I'm going to dull that down a bit with a bit of yellow ochre. So my sky is looking a little bit cloudy and grey. Mm, I should probably get some more blue in there, shouldn't I? It's looking quite sad. I'm going to mix a little bit of black and blue together and a bit of white in there. So I'm always mixing blue and grey. Give myself some more vibrant blue skies. Again, we want to keep it relatively light because we do want to contrast with the Jim Dine style background. And obviously, this is where I would get a little brush and I would go in with a bit more detail. Unless you want to do the kind of smooth part of the saw still and follow that line so you don't go around the bumps and then the bumps you make with the charcoal, that's fine. Blending it all in, mixing it in with a little bit of water to kind of blend it all out a bit and dragging it down. Now I could go lighter along the top but I don't know if I really want to. Um, this is where you might want to play around putting in some things like clouds. You know, darker clouds or lighter clouds, that's completely up to you. You do want to make it a sky scene. I do highly, there's millions of tutorials on YouTube and stuff for painting clouds. So I do recommend having a look at some of those. Okay, I'm just going in with lots of little, it's all about texture with clouds, I think, and not doing like cartoony shapes. You don't need fairly straight lines, drag them along. But do look on tutorials about how to paint skies and sunsets. You know, this piece ultimately should be showing off your best skills. It's not a piece we're kind of rushing along to finish. It's a piece you're doing to show what you're capable of. And this is kind of the pinnacle of what you're capable of. So everything you're doing, you know, choose to do it because you know that it's something you can do well or 
learn how to do it better. You know, follow tutorials, ask me if there's a specific thing you're struggling with. Need a bit of contrast in those clouds. Probably need more contrast, but I'd have to swap to a smaller brush and I can't have to go get a smaller brush right now. So I'll just add a few little bits in. Try and keep within the lines like I just didn't do. Okay, we're getting a little bit of the scene there. Now, obviously, the main bulk of this scene is going to be in these logs. So you're going to have to get those really detailed, lots of them in here into that section. You can see I've left that section there. That's completely up to you. I decided to leave a little bit of that machinery element to it. Um, also, if you start getting into the background and it starts getting too small for you to add really the detail that you want to, don't be afraid to just like, use pencil instead. Let it dry. Use coloured pencil. We can mix media in this. Okay, you always need to choose what's going to be most appropriate. So if it starts getting too small at the background and you can't do that with acrylics, Swap out to coloured pencil and try and do it a little bit like that. That's absolutely fine, especially if you've got decent coloured pencils. Now, I still like this idea of having the little silhouettes of the machines in there. My paint is still wet at the moment, so it's probably a bit optimistic. I could paint them and may just work back in with a bit of charcoal, or I'd highly recommend a black fine line pen. I'm not going to use black fine line pen at the moment, because again, my paint's a bit too wet. And it's going to ruin my pen, which I don't want to do. But, you know, do again get yourself pictures. To work from okay don't do it from your mind like I'm kind of doing at the moment getting very childlike drawings black biro black pen whatever you want to do that I kind of put in some logs over there in the other one it won't quite go into the wet paint still that's annoying that's not too wet at the moment but you know if you want to start working in different media the point is that you can okay not too good so well <laughs> So it would be lovely to have just in, off in the background, in the distance, maybe some machinery in there. It could just be one of the bigger machines that you've drawn in your book again. It could be a little pile of logs like I've done in this one here. Something just off in the background. I'd get some black fine line pen. Pen would probably work very well for a little bit of detail and work back into it. So this is a piece you will have to take a lot of time to make sure the painting is very realistic, particularly logs in the foreground. Yeah, that's going to be really important. You can see here I've put my horizon line on the base of the chainsaw. I think that works quite well from still making it look like a chainsaw, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I think the, the messy background works really well. Once that's kind of once this piece is done, you can build it up a little bit more if you want to. Do just take you know mind of Jim Dine's work. I think it, it, it says a lot when we're annotating. If you want to do a little research back to Jim Dine then this could say a lot about the damage. I mean, obviously charcoal in itself, the messiness of it, the kind of design, it says a lot about the kind of damage this is causing while also bringing into the foreground your work. You know, if you can get yourself a nice dark background in there, you know, let the pieces, let the pieces damage it. You know, it should look like an old damaged piece of work. This might end up being an experiment. It's something I would try this week. Uh, and if you do it on a larger scale, I don't think, I mean, obviously the painting is going to take a bit of time, but the drawing, I would definitely do a few Jim Dine drawings. If you've got other materials you can work on, please do have a go at doing some Jim, Dor um, Jim Dine work on brown paper, because again, linking with the idea of the brown, the tree, something like this could work really well. Um, you absolutely can do a drawing like this. Maybe start off with an A4 drawing and pop it in your book and talk about it and say, you know what, I drew this. I like the idea of the tree, but it doesn't quite get in. The machinery I want it to. Um, if you've got black paper and chalk as well, obviously you can have a go at that. So if we're doing Jim Dine's work again, I mean, you could do a couple of different items. You could do a saw. Let me find a picture of a saw. If I take one of Jim Dine's ones, he does a saw there. You could do an opposite. So this is where you can do a few. Maybe don't draw the chainsaw for every single one. So in this one, Jim Dine does a bit of a saw. I've done that way too small, way too small. Let's make that a bit bigger. Handle the saw there, the saw kind of comes out. You've done saws and stuff in your work, so it will make sense. Find yourself some pictures to work from. Start off with something very loose. Maybe use a rubber to get rid of that bit. And then again, negative space it. Okay, so shade it in or charcoals or white pencil or black pencil if you've got it the key is blending it out okay blend it out not going into your actual shape until you want to add some detail into it nice and heavy with the chalk or the charcoal 
so that you've got something to move around as you go. My chalk's a little bit more solid than my charcoal, which isn't a good thing. So I'm going to go a bit messier with the shading to make sure it gets spread around. Okay, and even though it's quite simple, it's also very effective. You can even play around with other materials. So if we want to experiment with materials while doing Jim Dine style, you could try out some oil pastel, you could try out some watercolour, uh, and maybe try doing a loose watercolour painting with the same idea, spreading the water around, getting a sponge and messing all of your watercolour up, but only on the outside. So if we're going to do experimentation, let's do it properly. Okay, and then a little bit of shading inside, a lot more care when you're doing the actual shading. As I said, this doesn't blend in quite as well. And we want to get a little bit of detail into this handle. You could switch to coloured pencil if you want. I've got white pencil here, you could switch to some white pencil to do some very, very careful shading where I want there to be some. If I'm looking at reflective shapes, And reflective surfaces. So that's just a few suggestions for you. Have a look at Jim Dine um, or have a look at this first. This is one of your design ideas. Have a little play around with this. Maybe do a drawing in this style or this size. Discuss it. Talk about it. You're going to have to do it about A4 uh, and then consider what else you could do apart from a tree. That could be a nice introduction to Jim Dine. You look at Jim Dine and you can say, look, I've looked at machinery before. Um, maybe this is an element I want to bring in. Maybe I want to do my painting inside a saw. It could be a saw. It could be a chainsaw. Okay, we do a few drawings in this style. You could do them A3, you could do two or three of these and do two or three, two A3 pages. You could do a couple of smaller ones on an A3 page, one big one. That'd be a really lovely double page spread. One this size, maybe two A4 Jim Dine experiments. Okay, you talk about them, you do a little bit. On a page like this, you don't have to have a whole page reserved for Jim Dine. You could literally now put, do a drawing like this, put a little picture and you could write about Jim Dine around this drawing. It doesn't have to be a whole page and then a piece of work. You could write Jim Dine experiments little picture of Jim Dine work, write a little bit about your research. Say, so in looking through, in considering whether or not I want to do machinery and silhouettes of machinery, I came across Jim Dine and his style of working. It was something I was very interested in, so I've decided to do some of my own experiments. Enough. You could say a little bit about Jim Dine and research if you want to, but the idea is that he's just an, he's an, he's an inspiration. It doesn't have to be a whole page like you've done before. He's a bit of inspiration. Um, oh, I'll put that picture in the paint. That doesn't help. Whoopsie daisy. Fold that in off. Uh, so Jim Dine, experiments, drawings, and then maybe going in and having a go at doing something like this. Having a go at painting, testing it out, see if it works. You do this on an A3 page in your book with whatever materials you've got. You can explore other materials, you can explore coloured pencil, you can explore oil pastel, you can explore paint. Oil pastel might be a bit too thick, but if you could try out small sections, then you could start seeing... It might be you draw a little circle section of these stumps in a few different materials. It doesn't have to be every single one in the machine. You could draw yourself some little boxes, some little rectangles, and try out drawing a stump in paint, try out doing a stump in oil pastel, try out doing a stump in coloured pencil, saying which one works best, and then you put them into this. So that would be really good experimentation. There, we've got our artist link with Jim Dine and maybe the other person I mentioned earlier as well, Daniel Thompson, I want to say. Um, you've got your experimentation with materials, trying this in charcoal, maybe trying it in chalk or pencil, uh, with an artist link, Jim Dine, maybe Daniel Thompson as well. Um, we've got our experimentation. And then we've got our refinement in practicing and doing it a couple of times, trying different things out. And then we've got our final piece. So that's everything tipped. So do have a little go.